Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to go seriously big with this abstract statement piece and we're going to break tons of rules in acrylic painting. Namely, we are going to underbind some paint all over this canvas. That's something I usually tell you to not do. But with a couple coats of spray varnish afterwards, we can make sure that that paint is completely protected. So if you've ever wanted to just mix tons of water in your paint and really get it to streak and drip and smear, this is your painting. I am painting on a gigantic 24 by 48 inch canvas today, but you can feel free to paint it on a much smaller canvas if you like. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this two inch flat brush and I'm gonna wet it in my jar. And then I'm just gonna wipe this water all across the canvas. I know that painting on a gigantic canvas can seem really intimidating, but really it's the exact same thing as painting on a smaller canvas. You just wanna use larger tools. So that's why I'm using this brush. If you don't have a brush like this, that's perfectly fine. This is just a super cheap brush that I got in like a classroom value pack from somewhere. You can also use a house painting brush. That's a perfectly acceptable option. My easel is a little bit wobbly with this large canvas on it. If you don't have an easel that will hold a canvas this large, you could always put it where you plan on hanging it when you're done and just paint it while it's hanging on the wall. If you have a large spray bottle, you can just spray this and then wipe it with a brush as well. The spray bottle I have is just a teeny tiny little guy and I wasn't able to find a larger one before I shot this video. So we're just gonna do it this way. Or you could even use a sponge. If you have a sponge, just get the sponge wet and wipe it all across. It really doesn't matter whatever it takes for you to be able to do it. And I haven't done anything to this canvas except take it out of the package. So I didn't gesso it or anything. All right, I have some black and some white and I'm just gonna start grabbing some. and just kind of applying it wherever I feel like I want it. And because I wet down this canvas, the paint is spreading really smooth and it's also a little thin. I'm, I've already started underbinding my paint. But I like that kind of wash look Back when I was beginning to learn how to paint, I used to underbind paint like this all the time. And I didn't know any better until one day I went to varnish a painting that had a bunch of drips on it and I used the liquid varnish, you know, the kind you brush on. And all of the paint that had been dried for a couple of years smeared <laughs> all over the canvas. And I thought, oh, well, that's why you shouldn't underbind your paint. But today it's okay because we're gonna use some spray varnish and secure it all down. So don't be afraid to get that paint nice and thin. And if you get some drips and runs, that is okay. While we're doing this background color, you can paint the sides if you like. That's just too much work for me, so I don't bother with that. I'm just gonna finish covering this canvas in a mixture of black and white, and then we'll move on.
Okay, so our huge canvas is covered and I'm gonna get my hair dryer and dry it and then we will continue. All right, now my canvas is pretty dry and even though we're gonna do a lot of drips and underbinding, I wanted to dry it because otherwise this layer would just come off and some of it may a little anyway, especially right over here where the paint is very thin, where the canvas was quite wet. It might come up a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that because that's the name of the game today. So I'm gonna start over here and I've got my little spray bottle. I wish I had a larger one, but we're gonna just make do with what we have. And I'm just gonna lightly mist this whole area. Just kind of the top half of the canvas. I'm not really looking for the paint to start running down the canvas just yet, or the water, just dampening it. All right, so I've got my brush. I didn't clean it off real well, and as you can see, there's water dripping out of it. I'm gonna come into my black and just pull some out, mix it into my brush. I don't want clumps of paint on here. I want that paint to be pretty mixed into the water that I have. Just grab the little more water. If there's clumps in your paint, they're gonna stick to the canvas and they won't flow real well. And I'm just gonna start up here. I'm gonna press my brush into the canvas to get out a lot of that water and paint. I'm gonna work in fairly small sections. Take my water bottle and just kind of spray right under it. I'm not really spraying the paint I just laid down. I'm spraying the canvas right under it. And we'll let that drip for a minute. Let's do that all the way across. Like I said before, I used to wash paint really, really thin like this all the time. Back when I was first starting to paint, I didn't realize that that wasn't something that you should do. <laughs> and I've been wanting to do it again, but I wanted to make sure that I could secure the paint so that it didn't come off. So I thought about spray varnish and wondered if that would help secure the paint. So I called Liquitex and they said, yep, you can use spray varnish to kind of secure it afterwards. And you can also use airbrush medium instead of water. I wasn't able to get my hands on some airbrush medium just yet, but I'm gonna get some and try that too. And so if I were using airbrush medium today, I would be dipping my brush into that rather than water, and it would fill my spray bottle with the airbrush medium instead of water. The airbrush medium actually has binder in it, but it's very fluid like water. So I'm gonna try that another time too. But today we're gonna do this and use spray varnish to secure it. See my paint is a little clumpy right there, so it's not really running. So I just dipped my brush straight into the water and just shook it off a little bit. And I'll just swipe over that. Spray the bottom edge again. I really like my drips to, to kind of fan out. I don't like these straight down drips. So I'm kind of spraying in my drips and just below them so they really get watery and washed out looking. See how watery the paint is on my palette, how it's flowing. That's what you're looking for here. Now, if you do this, make sure that you protect your floor. Either do it on a concrete floor like what I'm doing or put down some kind of plastic on the floor to catch the drips because this is gonna drip off of the bottom of the canvas quite a bit. Let's do a little bit more. Another thing I used to always do was paint on large canvases. I really like large canvases, kind of statement pieces for your living space or your workspace. But a lot of times painting on a huge canvas isn't very 
conducive to making a video. So I haven't done it for a long, long time. So this kind of feels like home to me right now. Kind of scrape it on the edge there. Ooh, there we go. Now, if you're using oil paint, now I don't use oil paint, but as far as I know, if you use paint thinner on your oil paint, then you're perfectly fine to do washes like this. If I'm wrong about that, somebody please correct me. But I think oil paint, you're fine to just use thinner and get super thin washes like this. All right, I washed off my brush a bit, and again, it's super, super wet. I'm just gonna get some white. But it's kind of gray, because I didn't clean off my brush real, real well. See how much that water is flowing in there? I'm just kind of scooping it up in my brush. And let's add some lighter spots. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way across the top here. Just in a few areas. Another cool thing you're gonna see happen when you underbind acrylic paint like this is some of the colors will separate. They settle different. And that's because of the pigments used to create that color. So if you've ever noticed after painting with black and some other colors, when you go to change your water jar, the black has all settled to the bottom. And that's because the pigment made to use the black paint is much heavier than most of the other pigments. And you'll kind of see that happening with the paint as it drips too. I really like that white area. I think I'll add a couple more of those. I think I am actually gonna take this white almost all the way across, because I'm gonna layer my drips pretty well, so I'll add some of the dark back in. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back. All right, our canvas is pretty dry. There's a couple spots that are still a little wet. I have my super wet and drippy brush and I'm gonna go back into the black paint. Getting a soupy mess here on my palette. So this time, I didn't spray down my canvas before applying the wet paint. And what that's gonna do is help hold a little bit more of that up at the top. Notice how dark it is there. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I want a really dark top area and a really kind of spread out drip pattern as it goes down. See, I just don't like those really straight drips. I like to really burst them out, just like that. The more we layer this, drying in between each layer, the more of a, a deep, rainy effect we're gonna get. And I've decided, I think, I think I've decided, that that's what I want is for it to look like rain. Usually when I paint like this, I don't come to it with a real solid idea. I'll have a little bit of an idea, mostly just in a color scheme and techniques that I wanna use. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I've got a, color, a couple other colors off to the side that I'm gonna throw in maybe later, we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna do this all in just black and white, but I change my mind a lot as I paint like this.
be patient while you paint like this, you know, because like I said, you want to let your layers dry here and there so that you don't end up just kind of washing them all away. If you're painting this in the summer and you live in a really warm climate, really warm, dry climate, this is going to dry pretty fast, so you won't have to wait too terribly long. It's not very warm or dry today, so I am having to use my hair dryer here and there. I feel like that's pretty good. I think I'm going to darken up one area and then I'm going to dry this. Now, if you're going to use a hair dryer to dry, hold it at a distance. Don't hold your hair dryer right up to it because that's really going to kind of push your paint around and get your streaks and drips to kind of bend. If that's what you want, that's perfectly fine. But if you want them to really kind of cascade straight down, hold your hair dryer back two or three feet and use it on the low setting. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry one more time and we'll be back. All right, we're pretty dry. I have decided I'm gonna try something just a little bit different. I really want this left corner over here to be quite dark. And I like this lighter streak here, so I want to keep this side lighter, I've decided. But as you can tell, as the black dries, you can't see it quite as good as the white, and that's partially because of the weight of the black pigment, I think, the way that it settles. So I'm going to go flat and all the way across here with my super wet paint. Still just kind of spraying right under it to get it started flowing. Then just a little bit inside. If you spray it too directly up here where the paint's thick, you'll kind of push the paint away and you'll get a blank spot. A little tiny bit of that white paint wasn't quite dry. I don't know if you can see that there. It's, so it's streaking over top of the black paint. And that's what I mean about the different weights of the paint making it streak different. So the white paint kind of pushed the black back and it's coming down over to the top of it. Let's do that in the center here too. Right there, I had a little bit of a line for my brush, so I did put my spray bottle quite close to it and kind of spray, and that'll just help break up a line. All right, I like that much better. I'm gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna come back and brighten this area up a bit. All right, it's fairly dry. It's still kind of wet up at the top, but I'm gonna add my white right now. So I may just go back and forth, adding a few layers and then, and put you into time lapse, and then we'll come back and do some other stuff. All right, this is pretty dry. I'm gonna mist down the bottom half just so my paint spreads easier. I'm actually gonna paint over all of this part here. So I'm using the same brush and I've wiped a little bit of the water off. I'm using it pretty traditionally at this point, a normal paint to water ratio. And I'm gonna stand back, make sure that I'm standing directly in the center so that I can get as straight and level of a line as possible. 
work on it a little bit at a time. If you need to use a ruler, that's fine too. Start a little lower than you think you actually want the line, and that way if you have to make adjustments, it doesn't keep getting higher and higher and higher than you want it. Make sure you stand back and look at it. I walked about five feet away so I could see if it was level. It looks a little low on this side to me. And then I'm just gonna fill all of this bottom area in with black. I don't know, you probably can't tell but I am picking up a little bit of that white and it's mixing in with my black. And even though that white paint was dry, that's happening. And that's because when we sprayed the water onto the canvas to get the paint to flow, we underbound the paint, which means we separated it from the binder. We thinned the binder out too much. And so the pigment is just kind of sitting on the surface of the canvas. And that's why Typically, you don't want to underbind your paint. If I were using another color that I didn't want to mix with the white or the black, then I would have done my spray varnish here. I would have done the spray varnish and then come back after that was dry and done this part. And I think I already told you, but just in case I didn't, the reason we'll be using spray varnish instead is because using a liquid varnish, if we brush over top of this with the liquid varnish, it's gonna pick up all of that loose pigment and smear it. So that's why we use the spray varnish, because it kind of sticks that loose pigment down. You know what? I just made a decision that I didn't plan on making. I'm only gonna take my black down that far. That's as far down as I'm gonna go with it. And now I'm gonna spray that bottom edge and get it to flow a bit. All right, so while I was letting this dry, I decided that I want a really large moon or planet type thing right here. So I don't have anything large enough to trace a circle that big and I don't wanna freehand it. So we're gonna take some string. I'm gonna take the end of the string and decide where I want the center of this shape. And I think right about here. So I'm gonna take the string and just kind of hold it to that spot and decide how far out I want to go. Let's see. I think I want it about that tall. Make sure that goes the direction that I want it to go. I think that's good. I'm going to cut it about three inches or so past that mark. I have a piece of chalk here. And I'm just going to tie the string around the chalk. You can use a piece of tape if you need to to make sure that it's secure so your chalk doesn't come out. Tie it nice and tight. I'm gonna take a little piece of painter's tape and I'm gonna tape the end right where I wanted it, but down into the black because I don't want my planet to, ex to extend beyond the edge of the black. So I've got my string hanging down about an inch below the black. I'm just gonna tape it on. Make sure your paint is dry before you put the tape on. All right, I'm just gonna put my finger there, make sure that that's secure. Pull it so it's taut, but it doesn't have to be super tight. I'm just gonna make sure that's the length. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna start right here on the edge of the black and just draw a circle up and around. There we go. That's a super easy way to get a nice symmetrical circle shape. Okay, I'm going down to my one inch flat brush. I just wet it in my jar and wiped it on the edge like normal. And I'm gonna load up with white. 
and just fill in the shape. Remember to use the edge of your brush to make a straight line. Don't try and make a straight line like this because as you put pressure on your brush, it widens and see you get kind of a fuzzy line. But if you use the edge of your brush, you get a nice crisp line. And again, I am picking up some of that black. I'm getting a little bit of a grayness to the white that I'm laying down here, even though that black is dry. And I think you'll start to be able to see that as we fill this in. I'm gonna go right down to my black there. Again, if this is a color you don't want to mix with the black and the white, then just put a coat of spray varnish on it, let it dry completely, and then come back and do this. And use the edge of my brush to create the line here at the bottom too. All right, my spray bottle, I'm only gonna spray it in the black. I'm gonna try really hard not to spray into the white at all. Just the black. It's already catching just a bit of that white. Mix a little bit of extra water into my white paint. And I'm gonna let it just touch into the black a bit there. Just kind of streak it up into my planet shape. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do on the inside of this shape yet. So it's okay if the bottom edge looks a little off or wonky because I'm probably going to do something else to it. I want you to be really free when you paint like this. You know, don't have expectations. Just experiment and see what you can get the paint to do. What colors do different things when they're layered together. All right, I'm gonna stand back and look at it, decide what I like, what I don't like, what I'd like to see next. And we'll let this dry for a bit. All right, change my mind once again. Getting more white. Really gonna lay it on down here. No longer worried about what this planet moon thing looks like on the inside, because I have an idea for it. But I wanna get a good amount of the white here at the bottom. All right, while my drip's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my planet again. So I've got titanium white and a little bit of phthalo blue. 
And I'm just gonna grab a bit of phthalo blue. I don't want it to be too dark of a color. Now I am just gonna kinda lay it on however, still using the edge to really get up to that edge of the planet. Throw in a little darker blue here and there. And then light pressure, I'm just gonna smooth them together. See how I'm just taking out the brush strokes and barely, barely touching the canvas. So that leaves some of the darker spots and some of the lighter spots. I'm just gonna do that all over this planet. If your paint is drying a little bit and you're having a hard time getting the brush strokes to kind of fade out with that light pressure, just dip your brush in the water, get a little bit of extra water on your brush, and then lightly go over it. I'm trying to keep my canvas from wiggling so much. This is a great easel, but painting on a larger canvas like this really makes it wobble. I can just barely see where my black line was. If you can't, just draw it on there again real quick with your chalk and then go back over it. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry one more time. We're gonna do one more set of drips and then we're gonna move on to something not drippy, I think. There might be a little bit of drips in there. All right, I'm gonna take the same blue-white color and just do a little bit of drips down here. I'm not gonna get too crazy with the blue. I don't wanna lose all of this white. All right, now I've downloaded this skyline vector from graphic stock and I'm gonna use it as a guide and start kind of sketching in a cityscape here. Let's start right here. If you need to use a ruler to get straight lines, use a ruler.
I'm gonna take my half inch flat brush, wet it in my jar, just like normal, not too much water. And I'm gonna fill all of that in with black paint. So I'm gonna put you into super time lapse here because this is gonna take a little while. All right, now I have this round brush and black paint and I'm gonna draw a fairly simple tree right in the middle of our city here. A little heavier pressure at the bottom there to widen out the trunk and lighter pressure as we go up so we can get some nice thin branches. Let it overlap your buildings a little. You know, if it gets close to it, don't try and keep it from touching the building. I think that this tree is a little closer to us than the buildings. If you need to use a smaller brush here so that you can get some thin lines, that's perfectly okay. All right, now I have this old natural hair bristle brush. See, it's kind of puffy, it's stiff. It's a really ugly brush. These are super cheap brushes. You can get them anywhere. I'm using it dry. I'm just gonna tap into some black, tap it off over here a little bit so I don't have too much. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of foliage into our tree. Every once in a while I change the position of my brush so I don't get these real regular looking blocks that all look exactly the same. Don't overwork this, you know, set it down somewhere and leave it. Don't go over and over the same spots because then you'll just end up getting like a big black smeary blob. I'm just gonna add a little bit heavier here and there and we're done with our tree. All right, we're almost done. I am gonna do just a little more drips right here. Just with some black, not a lot, just a little bit. 
Then we're gonna do one other thing and I think we're done. All right, now I'm gonna take my palette knife and just pick up a little bit of white right on the edge. See, I don't have a lot. And what I'm gonna do is just come into my horizon line. I've got my palette knife square onto my canvas, so it's straight on, it's not plopped down like this. Straight onto my canvas, right on that edge. And then I'm gonna roll it down just a little bit and just kind of start streaking it across here. As I go and my paint starts to lessen, I am rolling it toward the canvas just a little bit, a little bit flatter. And now I'm almost flat and I'm barely touching it. I'm just touching the paint and I'm just kind of streaking that across. Let it get kind of that broken line at the bottom there. There we go. Same thing here, square onto the canvas, roll it down just a bit, streak across and it slowly starts to get flatter and flatter as I go. And I didn't wait for those drips to dry, so it's pulling a little bit into it. Oh, and my finger touched it and left a weird mark. I like the way the black is mixing in there into this palette knife white. Careful not to let your finger touch. Just gonna lightly streak a bit of that. There's really not much paint on my knife at this point. Just a couple little water ripples or something in here. Barely touching. Pull some of them down just a little bit, very, very lightly. Because I got a little bit of black mixed in there and I like that, I'm going to pick up the tiniest speck of black here and just run a bit of it through. All right, now I'm going to sign it and call it done. And there is your super abstract statement piece, Blue Moon in the City. I hope you enjoyed breaking the rules with me on this one and underbinding our paint the absolute most that we possibly could. Now I need to let this dry for a couple of days and then I'll add some spray varnish to it. When I do that, I'll make a video on how to spray varnish a painting. Now, as I said before, you can absolutely do this on a much smaller canvas. This week, for some reason, go big or go home was my theme. 
If you'd like to keep painting with me today, check out these two videos that I've picked just for you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to check out the video description below for links to where you can find me all over the internet because I would absolutely love to see your version of this painting. Thank you as always for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.